everyone. It's Lisa here, your go-to gal for all things DIY and watercolor. And today I've got something super fun and budget friendly for you. We're going to be testing out the Crafter Square watercolor set. I am kicking off a new series where I'll be testing out different watercolor and art supplies. I'll be sharing my honest thoughts and helping you find the best tools for your creative journey. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned artist, I've got you covered. Let's explore these goodies together and see what works and what doesn't. And we're gonna see if this $1.25 watercolor set can bring some magic to our art projects. But let's stop talking about it and let's start being about it and let's get to painting. Crafter Square is a Dollar Tree brand and I'm gonna be trying out their watercolor pen set. It has eight colors and it comes in this plastic container and it's very cheapsy, 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 <laughs> cheap, flimsy plastic. And the brush is totally useless. So we're not even gonna use that. I really don't know what you could do with the brush, but I am gonna spritz my watercolors so that I can hydrate them and activate them and get them ready to use. And then I'm gonna do a swatch page. And I'm just doing circles, starting off with the white color and then the purple color. And they are, you know, pretty transparent. The yellow color, not very, not super vibrant, but I'm also feeling like I'm having to put on a lot of color. Here's the orange color and there's no names to it. So, you know, it's just, this one's red. There you go, this one's red. Now red kind of showed up to the party here. <laughs> you can see that one a little bit better, but I feel like I'm having to add quite a bit of paint to even just like notice it. I did like this green color, if I'm being honest. I thought it was a nice color. Blue also, you can kind of tell, oh, why is my camera kind of whiting out on us? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it's the, you can't see the colors. <laughs> and this one's black. And unless you put a lot of black on, it tends to look just like really dark gray, in my opinion. Then I'm going to be doing an abstract piece on the opposite side of the swatch page. And I'm just drawing some lines. And I saw Andrea Nelson from A Dream or a Day Art do this. And she just drew some lines. And then she just made some lines of paint. And of course I'm using the white one first. You cannot see it, admittedly. You can't really see it, <laughs> but it's fine. It's there. It does kind of show up like you can see it, but not really. I'm going in paint color order and I've heard lots of other watercolor artists comment on the way that the palette is laid out. I don't know why it's laid out this way, but purple was next and then we're doing yellow. And again, I feel like I'm having to put quite a bit of paint on there to actually get it to work. Then I switch to the orange and I'm just making these lines down following the curves that I drew with my pencil. Just kind of an abstract art kind of thing until and I switch colors when I feel like switching colors. Now we have the red color and that one shows up just, it shows up a lot better without as much glopping it on. <laughs> and then the green that I liked and then of course we have the blue and then the black. And I'm gonna end with the green, I mean with the white. Crafter Square also has brushes and I'm gonna be using them for this portion of the video. I am making paint swatches and even though I really can't see the white, I'm swatching it anyway. And as I said before, these colors don't have names other than this is the white one. And I'm leaving the top portion blank. When I get to the you know, quote unquote, nicer watercolors. I'll kind of swatch them a little bit differently so you can kind of see the darker opaque color going to a lighter color so you can see the whole kind of spectrum of that the color can do. But these, like again, I really don't plan on using them for anything else other than just I tested these out. But I think you'll be surprised at the project that I do at the end. I did plan on doing, I'm going to be doing more testing videos because like I said, this is a start of a series and I'm going to be doing the same card design for, with each paint palette. So that way you get an idea of how all these work. Oh, I was trying to show you there that I was already hitting what we call hitting pan. <laughs> I was already like reaching the bottom of the thing and I'm just doing one project. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how long that'll last how much I'm applying. Maybe I'm applying way too much. Who knows? But I am just swatching all of the colors so that you can get an idea of how they look on watercolor paper. And last but not least, see when you put on the, the black color as I'm putting it on here, it starts to look gray. And now I just couldn't help myself. I was trying to feel if it felt gloopy or like gummy and it didn't really. And it came off my, you know, fingers pretty easily once I washed them. 
But anyway, now let's make a card. So what I've done is taped off all around the card and then I've taped off two lines across the middle there. You can kind of see where the, the tape is. And I'm taking several of the colors and I'm drawing rectangle, long rectangle lines down. We're gonna be making a birthday card. And once we kind of go through all the colors that I wanna use, we're gonna let it dry. But um, while that's drying, <laughs> I'm gonna take some of the yellow paint and kind of mixing it in a little bit with the orange, going back and adding some orange to kind of make it look like a flame. And then once it's all dry, I'm taking one of my black fine liners and I am just kind of outlining each of the birthday candle shapes, including the flame. Then I'm taking a white gel pen and I believe it's Jelly Roll. I always think of like Tootsie Roll. Let's Tootsie Roll. Anyways, um, it's not that. <laughs> it's a Jelly Roll pen. And I am adding some just different designs to the candles to kind of make them unique from one another. Once that's done, I do use my heat gun to kind of heat up the tape that I put down so that I can take it off and hopefully not rip the paper. And typically, if your tape is ripping the paper, it could be the paper's fault, <laughs> but I try to heat it up so that it kind of loosens that adhesion and hopefully gives me a clean line when I remove it. And then I went in with a pencil and I was writing out happy birthday, making sure it all kind of fit and was going to be where I wanted it to be. And then I go back with another fine liner and I use various sizes. Usually on the initial pass, I will use one of my thinner fine liners so that I can kind of gauge what I'm doing. And then I go back with a thicker fine liner. I don't use the brush pen <laughs> for this part. Uh, I'm not that good at calligraphy and hand lettering just yet. So I go back with the another fine liner, just a thicker size, and I kind of do the faux calligraphy where you add a heavier line on the downstroke, just kind of make that a little bit thicker line. And I'm writing happy in cursive, and then in sort of block letter fashion, I am writing the word birthday. So happy is in cursive, and birthday is going to be in like block letter type things. And again, I'm just going over it to kind of define it and make it stand out a little bit more. Y'all, this is how it turns out. This is a $1.25 paint set. <laughs> so this turns out really cute, I mean, for the price. And then here's my little card that I made. It's actually a postcard. And then my swatch page is on the left down there. And then on the right is my little abstract design. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I think it turned out really cute. And here's just another look at the swatch page. See, you can kind of see the white. It looks kind of like a grayish kind of color. Anyways, that's how it turned out, and I look forward to sharing more of this series with you guys. I have actually quite a few palettes <laughs> to test out, and I hope you'll tune in for the next episode. These are kind of starting to leak everywhere, but would I recommend the Crafter Square watercolor paint set? Absolutely. It's only $1.25, and you can get super creative without breaking the bank. And look, we made a super cute card, birthday card. Captain, what do you think? He don't care. But the only thing that I would say is, if you buy the paint set, you're gonna have to buy some brushes because the brush that comes with it is no bueno. <laughs> it wouldn't work. It wouldn't, well, I mean, it would, but not really. Not like, it wouldn't be able to complete this kind of project. And this is super simple and fun to give to somebody. So, um, I'd love to see what you come up with if you try something similar or if you, I've, see I've got paint all over me now. If you try something similar or if you test out the Crafter Square watercolor paint set, let me know. Tag me in all the places so that I can see what you created. Don't forget to like, follow, and share for more fun DIY and watercolor tutorials. You can follow me in all the places. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. My handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye!